Hey guys, Adrian Green here. And today I wanted to walk you through what the process looks like for buying a house when you are out of town. So right now I work with a lot of out of town investors uh, who live elsewhere and they are looking to invest in the Chattanooga real estate market. And you may also be someone who lives elsewhere and is looking to move to Chattanooga and you want to you know, buy a house when you are located elsewhere. And this would be the same process for you. I want to kind of walk you through how that looks because that looks a little different than what you may have done if you've bought a place when you were physically located there before. Um, but we make it work and there's no issue and people have been happily doing this. And so let's show you how. So first, what I get started with when I'm working with someone out of town is doing either a Zoom or a phone consultation. So I actually have my calendar link in the description below. And hey, while you're looking below, make sure you thumbs up the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then click on that calendar link and you can set up a half hour uh, time based on when you're available and you choose whether or not you want it to be Zoom or phone, and then we'll meet and kind of learn what you're looking for. I can answer any questions you have, and really the biggest thing is learn about you and what you're looking for. Based on that, I usually next set up a MLS search portal uh, based on the parameters that we discussed, areas you like, things like that. And so that way you get an email as soon as a house hits the market that meets your search criteria. Now I'll add that I also am networking with other people and having some off market opportunities. And I keep you in front of my mind to send those opportunities to you as well. But most purchases do happen through the MLS. And so it's important that you're on that MLS search. So you get an email alert as soon as something that's promising hits the market. Now, if you are at a place where you're not quite sure what area you're looking at yet, or you're not too familiar with the area, check out my other videos here. I try to have some videos to kind of teach about different areas in Chattanooga. Also my social media on Instagram and on Facebook, I do post things about the different areas here. And then I also have a resource on my website uh, to help you with market research links to where you can research schools, um, neighborhoods, some things like that. Uh, so that's what I try to do to help empower you to decide what area is the best fit for you. Uh, Cause it wouldn't make sense for me to say, Hey, ABC neighborhood is the best neighborhood because what is the best neighborhood for me may not be the best neighborhood for you. So I try to give you the resources and share what I can with you so that you are empowered to make your own decisions about what, uh, what areas you like, what houses you like, things like that. So that's all that first part of learning about you, you learning about me in Chattanooga and us trying to find these places that look promising. Now let's say we found this house on 123 Main Street and you're like, hey, this looks really good. I wanna learn more. So what I do is I do some research on that property right away. I'm gonna let you know if it's in a flood zone. I'm gonna let you know of anything else notable in that area and I'm going to set up a tour by myself or one of my partners to get out there as soon as possible. And we will take photos and videos that I put in a private album that we sent to, to you. And what we do in that tour is really show you probably more than you would see if you went in person because I stand in the front of the, of the house, um, like on the street, and I do a whole 360, carefully looking at all the neighbor's houses, noting anything that may not be apparent in the video, like, hey, that house has a new roof. Hey, that house doesn't. Um, that house is being renovated. Three of the five houses on this block are being renovated or things of that nature so that you really can highlight those details. Then inside the house, Everything other than the attic and the crawl space is being looked at. So we look at all the major systems, get photos of those, look under the sinks, get photos of the plumbing. That gives us a good idea of how well the house is being maintained and issues you may have. And then of course do a video walkthrough so that you can see. I find that often with the MLS photos are missing is an idea of the flow and the floor plan. So we do a video walkthrough so you can see how all these rooms are connected and what that flow is like. So all those photos and videos go into an online album that I send you the link to. Um, and then we kind of have a pretty decent idea of what the house is like. Then it comes time to make an offer. So again, I'm going to pull um, sale comps for you. I'm going to help with, if it's an investment purchase, uh, rental comps, an idea of what a market rent would be. Um, I will make a note right here, guys. Comps are the comparable sales or rentals that have happened recently. And they are always rear facing. As we go forward, what's been happening with prices? They've been going up. We've had appreciation. 2020's median purchase price was 
13% higher than 2019s. So I do want to keep that in mind that, you know, I'll show you, hey, in the last six months, you know, similar houses in this neighborhood have sold for 250,000, but keep in mind, we're seeing an upward climb there. So that means this house in this market is likely selling for more than that historic comp of 250,000. All right. But it does give us a baseline. I just want you to understand that it's like a baseline and we are seeing prices rise from there. Okay. Um, so I'll work with you to talk about current trends we're seeing in offers, what some options are for you. Uh, at the end of the day, it's very important to me that this is your offer for your house. I will tell you options of what you can do and you at the end of the day, choose what you'd like to offer. I'm never going to pressure people to do certain things or anything like that. I'm going to say, Hey, here are the choices. What are you comfortable with? And that's your offer. And that's what we submit. So in this market right now, all right, it is April, 2021. It is a, um, a pretty fast moving market. And so I will note that we don't typically have what you may have experienced several years ago where you put in an offer, there's, you know, an 80% or better chance that it is accepted. We are seeing a lot of multiple offer situations, especially with very popular houses. So keep in mind that we may have to play this game a few times to find where what you're willing to pay at, compared to what others are willing to pay is that you're the one on top. Okay. And that's fine. That's the nature of the game right now. Uh, so let's say we get that house, you're under contract. What does the contract to close process look like when you are out of town? Well, the first part of that car, well, I guess the first thing is you have to send in your earnest money deposit, right? That's the money that you're putting down to uh, hold that house. When you are out of town, what that often looks like is that you wire the money in. I can get you those wire instructions and you wire that earnest money deposit in. It's hold in, held in an escrow account until closing. The next step is the home inspection or any other inspections that you want. Uh, here in the Chattanooga area, Often agents and buyers do not go to the home inspection. Often the inspector does it themselves. I always go and check in with the inspector at the inspection. I go, you know, about between halfway and the end of the inspection and I say, Hey, what did you guys find? What do I need to let my buyer know? And so I always check in home inspectors here that I work with are awesome. <laughs> They're my friends now and it's uh, it's really cool to talk to them. I like it. We get to talk about houses and it helps you as a buyer uh, to get more eyes on that. Let's say the home inspector has found something wrong that we need another inspector to inspect. Like um, we've had issues in crawl spaces with floor supports, like we need more columns or things like that before. I will help coordinate getting other inspectors in as needed to make sure that you know what's going on with that house. You have an estimate for any expected repairs and everything like that. All right. That is probably the last in-person um, item that I'm associated with during that contract to close until right before closing where there is a final walkthrough. Now, technically, if you are out of town, you waive that final walkthrough, but I always go anyway, take any photos and videos of, of things that would be an issue if they are there and um, do the best I can to get you the eyes on the ground, but I will note that legally you waive the final walkthrough. Uh, but I have had it pragmatically, you know, that I go to do this final walkthrough and we've had, for example, home repairs that were supposed to be done that weren't done. I did notice that, take photos of it, and we were able to get that addressed um, prior to, so that it was handled with closing. So um, while you technically waive the final walkthrough, I do go and get a set of eyes on there and note any issues so that we can get it uh, addressed. Now, if you are not here for closing, if you are somebody who is investing and you're never coming here, or you are someone who's moving here and just not here yet, uh, the title company, we let them know that it's going to be a remote closing. And what they do is they either coordinate with a mobile notary in your location, or they can also send you the paperwork and you can get a notary on your own to uh, get that paperwork signed and back. It is very important that that paperwork is signed on the date of closing and that then it is overnighted back to the title company where it is recorded and the funds are dispersed the following day. Um, but if, especially if you have a loan, loan lenders require that that paperwork be signed and dated 
the closing date. So uh, that's an important note for if you're doing a remote closing. And then closing, if you are not here uh, from the title company and from the house, I'm going to get any keys, documents, etc., from the seller. And I will either uh, do the handoff to you when you do get here to contractors. If you're having a house renovated, I will coordinate them having a lockbox, keys, whatever they need to get in, whatever you'd like. Or if you're using a property manager here, I will coordinate getting the keys and anything else necessary to that property manager. So, you know, if you're looking to be a remote investor, you do not have to set foot here at all. We handle everything for you and make it as easy as possible. Because remember guys, my goal is to help you build wealth in real estate. And if you're an out of town investor, I want you to have this be an easy, profitable experience so that you want to do it again. All right. And if you're someone who's looking to move here from out of town, you know, same kind of thing. I want this to be easy and successful for you so that you'll refer me to all the friends you're going to make here <laughs> to help them with their real estate transactions. Uh, and so that's pretty much the process of buying a house when you're out of town from our initial phone or zoom meeting all the way through the house hunt to the offer to getting under contract all the way to the closing table and then as needed beyond to those contractors or to the property manager. If you have any questions or you'd like to start this process for yourself, again, uh, my calendar link is below so we can schedule a uh, one-on-one -on -one time and I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you so much guys. Adrienne Green here, looking to help you build wealth through real estate.